The FDA is calling for more research on certain sunscreens after a study found the chemicals from some of those sunscreens were actually being absorbed into the user's bloodstream. Bridget has more on this topic with an expert tonight. Bridget. Hey, thanks, Dash. With me tonight is the Chief of Dermatology at the Queens Medical Center, Dr. Kevin Dawson. Doctor, thank you for joining us. I know you have a oh, pretty busy here. schedule. <laughs> I'd love for you to talk to us more about this study uh, by the FDA. Okay, and, and it's important to realize that this is just a really small, hopefully a preliminary study that the FDA did. They're kind of re-evaluating the safety of the sunscreens that are already out on the market. Um, we're way behind the rest of the world as far as sunscreen ingredients, um, and they're, they're, uh, Europe has um, many ingredients that we know are much more effective and presumably safer. So we're hoping, um, this is all speculation, we're hoping that this is just a segue into testing those ingredients. Um, but this study was particularly designed around the sunscreens that we already have available. They asked 24 people, a very small group, to apply liberal amounts of that sunscreen on 75% of their body four times a day for four days. And then they measured whether or not, they measured the blood to see if they could detect the chemicals. So they measured the sunscreen ingredients and they found traces in the bloodstream? Yeah, absolutely. And there really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. And it's certainly not a cause for alarm because you, we've known for a long time that when you put things on the skin, they can get absorbed into the body. And that's why the FDA is testing them. So it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of how much. Uh, and that's the important thing to know. Uh, we've known for a long time that these sunscreen ingredients will get into the skin. Um, they've actually done studies on oxybenzone uh, because 97% of Americans will have that in their bloodstream. Uh, in 1997, though, um, the, the animal studies that were done, they did in fact show that there are hormonal effects um, uh, in, the, uh, in these animals with oxybenzone at certain levels. But to put it in perspective, um, the levels at which they start to become toxic are somewhere in the range of about 6 million nanograms per milliliter. And you compare that to the studies that the FDA just released, where in the human studies, they're at about 200 nanograms per milliliter. And that was oxybenzone. That was the okay. worst one. The newer ones are actually much less than that, even 10 nanograms per milliliter. So we're looking in the range of more than 30,000 times that amount to actually become toxic. So if anything, that's reassuring to me that these are minuscule levels in our bloodstream, kind of equivalent to some of the other household chemicals and things that we come in contact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I think I could speak for viewers when they say anytime, you know, there's a study that comes out that's saying there are chemicals found within the bloodstream, it's going to cause some sort of alarm. Absolutely, especially if you don't realize that that's happening on a day-to-day -day basis with a lot of other things as well. Okay, so we can put that in perspective as mm -hmm. it's like, uh, what is the stuff we use for our hands? Sanitizer. Well, yeah, the hand sanitizers, and, and particularly, like, that's one of the reasons why the FDA banned um, some of the antibacterial hand soaps, because that we knew it was getting in the bloodstreams, but it took them a while to figure out that some of that was affecting hormones as well. Um, but, you know, if you're really worried about this, um, there are safer alternatives. Uh, we know that zinc oxide and titanium dioxide um, are things that are not absorbed by, in the, uh, by the skin into the bloodstream. And these are all ingredients found within sunscreen. And those are different types of ingredients found in the sunscreen. So if you look at the active ingredient of your sunscreen, it's on the back of the bottle, look at active ingredients. If you um, see sunscreen that has only zinc or titanium, you know that none of that is getting into the bloodstream. And the FDA, before releasing this data, has already determined that those sunscreen ingredients are safe and effective, and we don't need further studies on those. So bottom line, is it still safe? It's still safe to wear sunscreen. Um, you know, we put it in perspective. We know that sun damage is what causes skin cancer. Skin cancer is a huge problem in the United States. Five and a half million cases last year alone, and every hour somebody dies from their skin cancer in the United States. So even in a worst case scenario, any sunscreen you put on your skin is gonna be much safer than not protecting yourself and getting a sunburn, because we know that that has long-term health effects. Doctor, so please thank you. protect yourself. Please protect yourself, thank you. We can go Absolutely. on and on, but we gotta go back to Dash. Dash, over to you.